全球畅销书《晶片战争》的作者克里斯·米勒在本周访问台湾，与台积电的创办人张忠谋进行了世纪对谈。两人以不同世代的观点来谈论全球半导体的局势。我们在今天非常的荣幸能够独家连线专访到了这位年仅三十五岁的学者，他以历史的视角来看看台湾半导体领先世界的龙头地位，在美中晶片战火之下，还会面临着哪一些政治风险？来看我们的独家访问。Good evening, Professor Miller. Thank you for your time. Your book Chip War has become a global bestseller. Taiwan is a semiconductor stronghold, and we are so eager to learn more about what the future holds and what role can Taiwan play in the semiconductor industry. So, my first question for you today is that. I read from your book Chip War. We can see how semiconductor has become one of the most important industry in the world. However, a famous Japanese newspaper, the Nikkei, just pointed out that semiconductor is undermining the world order. Do you agree with this statement, and why? Well, I think we've seen over the past several years a whole range of governments, from the U.S. to China to. Japan to European governments are taking steps to inject more political concerns into the chip industry in a way that we haven't seen now for several decades. And so, in recent years, the chip industry and all the electronics that it enables has been structured without thinking about geopolitical and security concerns. But now, all of the world's key leaders are trying to restructure semiconductor supply chains to suit their political and strategic goals. Mm. As the semiconductor manufacturing process embarks so many countries and suppliers, even the U.S. Secretary of Commerce Gina Raimondo she admitted that it would never be possible for the U.S. to be self-sufficient in manufacturing semiconductors by itself. However, the U.S. still tries to rule out China from manufacturing semiconductors. So, Professor, do you think the U.S. can succeed in this strategy? Well, I think the U.S. strategy is is twofold. First, is to make sure that the U.S. and its partners, like Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and other countries, stay substantially ahead of China in terms of their technological capabilities. And it seems to me that's likely、uh, to be maintained. the The second, more difficult issue is to address the security ramifications of the fact that China plays a critical role in electronics and computing supply chains. And right now, I think、uh, many countries are trying to assess what's the right balance to strike between economic efficiency, cost considerations on the one hand, and security concerns. On the other, and we've seen、uh, many different large electronics companies begin to take steps to rebalance their assembly and manufacturing、uh, away from the current situation of heavy reliance on assembly in China towards other locations. But the challenge here is that China does play a major role in electronics and in producing the, many of the types of low-end chips that go into、uh, electronic devices. I read from the recent news report in Taiwan. According to Politico, the journal in, Ta-、uh, in New York, during a meeting between Mark Chan and U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi last August, when she visits Taiwan, Mark Chan said to her that if the U.S. believed that by making some big investments it could take over the semiconductor industry, then the U.S. would be too naive. Instead, if the U.S. really wants a reliable semiconductor industry, it should continue to invest in Taiwan security because Taiwan has already has everything the U.S. tries to achieve. Do you agree with this statement? What do we make of this statement, Professor? Well, I think the U.S. has many reasons to invest in Taiwan security, as indeed it's been doing、uh, now for over half a century.、Uh, semiconductors are just one,、uh, and far from the most important reason why why the U.S. has done so. I I think though it's important not to look at the chip industry only through the lens of Um, uh, of security, but also through the lens of economic efficiency, and and that's where the efforts underway to restructure 
chip supply chains face challenges because, of course, the current structure of the industry has been extraordinarily efficient. And Taiwan's role and TSMC's role in particular has been at the center of that. Now, I don't think we should expect um, other companies, for example, uh, to uh, to uh, to accept the position where TSMC is on top because there's always relentless competition between uh, companies for market share and for technological leadership. And it, it seems to me only natural that we're going to have lots of different uh, companies uh, competing f- to produce the most advanced technology and to have governments playing some role in trying to uh, shape uh, that outcome. Um, but when I look at TSMC's position in the chip market today, uh, my prediction would be that TSMC is likely to play a critical role in the world's chip supply for many years to come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, TSMC is still a critical role. And we can see U.S. try to root out China from this industry, from this community. But we saw that just this week, uh, the JSTC meeting just took place in Xiamen, China. And the SIA of the U.S. also sent a delegation to attend the meeting in China. Do you think the U.S. can really root out China in the semiconductor supply chain? Well, I don't think the U.S. is trying to completely eliminate use of chips made in China in the electronic supply chain. Um, I think if you look at the U.S. strategy, it's actually been to tolerate the substantial presence of China when it comes to lower end uh, chips. Now, the scale of subsidies that the Chinese government is putting into low end uh, chip making over the next couple of years are going to present some real uh, challenges when it comes to trade distortions. But actually, I think if you look at the growth in China's chip industry, especially at the low end, you find that other countries have been surprisingly willing uh, to let China win market share. And that's true not only of the U.S., it's true of Taiwan, of Japan, of, of Europe as well. It explains why it's been the case that China has expanded its position. Now, certainly there are concerns about uh, excessive reliance on chips produced in China for certain low-end uses. Um, But I don't think uh, completely rooting out China's position in the uh, semiconductor supply chain is uh, is an accurate description of the U.S. strategy. Yeah, correct. But with the rising tensions between Taiwan and China, many people see the semiconductor industry as a silicon shield to protect Taiwan against China's attack. Um, do you think that the semiconductor industry can really safeguard Taiwan's security? Because like the whole world maybe try to, uh, uh, to, pro- to protect Taiwan from China's attack. You know, I, I think the, the most credible guarantee of Taiwan's security is first off Taiwan's own defenses and secondly, U.S. military power. The, the U.S. and Taiwan have been defending Taiwan from attacks from China since 1949, even before the first chips were invented in the late 1950s. Uh, there was really substantial military tension uh, in the 1950s precisely over this issue. And if you look at, I think, what is most frightening for Chinese leaders, the reason that they are one of the key reasons why they've uh, decided not to deploy military power in the Taiwan Straits is because they're afraid of the military consequences, not so much the economic consequences. And so I think if we look at what's actually providing deterrence, it's it's not the chip industry, it's it's the military. Uh, yeah, the military. So uh, how, in corporate side, how important is it for corporates here to keep an eye on the chip war and what role can Taiwan really play? Well, it's, it's critical. And I think a lot of corporations have been surprised and caught flat-footed over the past uh, half decade as semiconductors have become a politicized issue in a way that they weren't previously. And a lot of companies have had to deal with unexpected costs as a result of that, as they've uh, faced new regulations, new export controls, had to change their manufacturing assembly footprint. And I think we should expect that these types of regulations and the politicization of the chip industry is only going to increase over the coming years as both China and the U.S. try to reshape supply chains so they're in their political interests. Okay, uh, Professor, you just mentioned that the chip war now becomes your political issue. So did you foresee that the whole world will be involved in the whole geopolitic issues when you did your research in IT? Well, I I decided to write the book because it seemed to me that outside of the chip industry, the rest of the world hadn't really realized the extent to which 
they were incredibly reliant on uh, chips produced by a very small number of companies in a small number of countries. Uh, and so it seemed to me that the rest of us had just taken semiconductors for granted in a way that was uh, dangerous. And that the typical person, when the chip industry was explained to them, would realize that, in fact, you can't understand the shape of the world economy or the structure of uh, international politics without putting semiconductors at the center of your analysis. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Miller, for your precious time and insight. And we'd love to see your observation and points be helpful for the semiconductor industry in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor.